thank the uh, organizers of SIR 2022 for the invitation, not only to moderate, but to give this presentation on tubular artery recanalization with all these experts at uh, this afternoon's session. These are my disclosures. When it comes to tibial vessel CTO recanalization, everybody is trying to achieve a, a beautiful three vessel runoff. But to do that, you have to understand what the challenges are today in terms of CLI patients. As a result of diabetes and CKD, today's CLI patient not only has bad or big artery disease, in other words, the vessels that help transmit blood to the limb, but we're also dealing with sad or small artery disease. The microvasculature that's 100 micrometers or smaller is being disrupted or destroyed as a result of diabetes and CKD. We're dealing with multi-level chronic total occlusions, a predominance of below knee and below ankle disease, and we know there's some histologic work showing cells of cartilage and bone in tibial CTOs, which can make recanalization very challenging and sometimes impossible. We not only are dealing with heavy calcification, which is intimal, but we're also dealing with heavy medial arterial calcification, or MAC. We know that MAC is independent of atherosclerosis. It's due to aging, diabetes, and CKD, and it's a strong marker of future cardiovascular events and death. And if you've never seen what it looks like on an X-ray or during an angiogram, it gives you that railroad track calcification that you typically see, as in this image to the right. So what are some of the challenges when dealing with CTOs? We've got, obviously, increased procedure time, higher radiation exposure, increased contrast volume, Oftentimes, there's a higher uh, chance for dissection, AV fistula formation, and perforation, and there's an increased li uh, likelihood for stent placement as a result. And depending on the experience of the operator, there's still a reported 20 to 50% CTO crossing failure rate. If you've never seen what a CTO looks like under a microscope, this is what it looks like. The black arrows are pointing to all the various microchannels that typically are, are present within a CTO. And the idea here is you're trying to pick or select the appropriate or ideal guide wire to get into these microchannels and then to subsequently recanalize or cross the CTO. When it comes to CTOs, remember that they have not only proximal and distal caps, but the lumen in between can be either hibernating where it's patent, oftentimes containing uh, debris, fibrotic tissue and thrombus of varying ages. This is obviously a much easier recanalization in the sense that once you cross that proximal cap, your guide wire sails through to the distal cap, and then obviously you have to use various techniques to cross the distal cap as well. If the channel in between the proximal and distal cap is completely obliterated and closed, then you're dealing with a non-hibernating lumen, and as you can imagine, this is a much tougher recanalization. So what about the actual CTO crossing techniques? Well, if you look throughout the literature, there's various names given to all the different techniques that are available. And you can look these up and read about them because they're well described in the literature. When we talk about crossing CTOs, especially below the knee or even below the ankle, there are a couple of important features related to guide wires that I think everyone has to understand. The first is the strength of a guide wire. Remember, the strength is equal to the radius to the fourth power. So based on the formula, when you're escalating your guide wire from 014 to 018, you're increasing the strength of that guide wire almost three times. The second important point related to guide wires is tip load. Guide wire tip load just means that it's the minimum grams of pressure needed to deflect or buckle the distal one centimeter of a guide wire two millimeters. So what does that look like in real time? Here I have three separate videos of a tibial recanalization with low, medium, and high tip load guide wires from left to right. In the low tip load guide wire, you can see there's more prolapse or buckling of the guide wire because the tip is softer. It's got a lower tip load. On the other hand, in the high tip load category, you can see that the tip of the guide wire buckles or prolapses very little. And so this really can help you penetrate or get through a CTO. But you have to be very careful using higher tip load guide wires as the risk of, pen, of perforation is significantly higher. So let's talk about the first two uh, techniques related to crossing CTOs. The first one is called the penetration technique. This is where you have a guide wire that you're rotating clockwise, counterclockwise, and putting a little bit of forward pressure and trying to penetrate that, that cap or the, the CTO itself. The drilling technique, on the other hand, is a similar concept, except you're rotating the guide wire 360 degrees rapidly in one direction or the other and trying to create a drilling action, much like a drill bit. 
So what does that look like in real time? So here's a CLI patient with a TP artery trunk occlusion that I wanted to recanalize. This was what I was gonna to try to cross. And you can see that I have a CTO catheter, I have a higher tip load guide wire, and basically, initially, there's a little bit of a penetration technique. You can see the cap is penetrated, then after that, I'm using a drilling technique to really cross through the rest of the uh, CTO. Here's another CLI patient who has a wound uh, that was non-healing despite optimal podiatry care and the distribution of the anterior tibial artery. And my plan was to really recanalize the anterior tibial artery and then reassess the pedal loop or the below ankle vasculature to see if I have a lot of hibernating vessels or if I have to tackle the pedal arch. And you can see here again, same thing if you watch this video. I initially started with a penetration technique to get through that initial proximal cap and some other caps that were within the CTO and then ultimately use the drilling technique as I traverse the CTO and you can see that about halfway down at the second red arrow there that the guide wire just sails distally after I get through and that's because that part of the CTO was hibernating like we talked about. Once I was able to achieve access into the dorsalis pedis artery I performed a good angiogram and you can see there's a lot of hibernating vessels uh, below the ankle uh, and so therefore pedal loop reconstruction was not needed in this case. And you can see here after crossing, good vessel prep in this case with orbital atherectomy, prolonged low pressure angioplasty with appropriate balloon sizing using intravascular ultrasound, I was able to really optimize the, the lumen caliber and the flow within the anterior tubal artery. And you can see we had a nice angiographic and ultimately a nice clinical result in this case. So let's talk about the knuckle wire technique. The knuckle wire technique is where you take a low tip load guide wire and you force it to prolapse to create a knuckle which you can then use to dissect through a CTO. With this uh, technique your recanalization may be intraluminal or it may be subintimal in which case you'll obviously need to re-enter the true lumen distal to your CTO using either various catheters, various guide wires with different shapes or possibly even a re-entry device. And remember the knuckle wire technique can be used whether you're using uh, anagrade access or access from above, whether you've got pedal access, in other words, access from below. And I've shown a video here to really show you a knuckle wire technique that I was uh, using uh, during a tibial vessel uh, recanalization. And uh, luckily I was able to cross uh, intraluminally in this case. What about other CTO crossing techniques such as cart, reverse cart, and the double balloon technique? Well, these are typically um, crossing techniques that are described when you have dual access. In other words, you have a catheter guide wire system from above as well as below, and each one is within a different subintimal plane. And the idea with cart is that you put a balloon uh, from below, you typically dilate 2.5 to 3 millimeters, ideally within the tibial vessel, in order to optimize that space, which then allows the catheter or guide wire or the system from above to basically cross into the space to achieve through and through access. Reverse cart just means you're putting the balloon from above, and the double balloon technique is obviously you have a balloon from above and below, and you're using them to disrupt the tissue plane between the two subintimal spaces to achieve through and through access. So let's look at another CLI case that really highlights some of these techniques. You can see here we have another CLI patient with an advanced wound really in the lateral part of his right foot. You can see he has all the hallmarks of chronic ischemic change, including thickened nails, shiny hairless skin. On exam, he also had dependent rubor and elevation pallor. After evaluation and appropriate workup, uh, he was taken to the angiography suite. You can see here I had anagrade access. The initial angiogram really showed occlusion of the anterior tibial artery at its origin without significant reconstitution, a short segment TP artery trunk occlusion, and occluded uh, posterior tibial artery at its origin with reconstitution really a few centimeters above the ankle joint. Uh, after assessment of the angiogram and the cap morphologies, I looked at this and I thought to myself that I would definitely need dual access. And so I initially started with pedal access into the dorsalis pedis artery. You can see here I'm using a nice knuckle wire technique to recanalize this anterior tibial artery. And it really sailed up to the top. And at that point, with the middle image, we were almost high-fiving, saying, all right, we crossed the first one, we're ready to go. Then I tried from above, and you can see that 
both catheter guide wire systems are in two separate subintimal planes. So the thought here was, well, what is my strategy here? What can I do? We obviously just talked about cart, reverse cart, and double balloon technique. I decided to use reverse cart in this case. I put a 2.5 millimeter balloon from above, performed an angioplasty, as you can see in that left image. In the middle image, I was able to cross with my guide wire uh, from one subintimal plane into the other to achieve through and through access. I ultimately externalized my guide wire and then ultimately reverse my access, which means that I then advance a catheter from above down along this guide wire to achieve distal access beyond my pedal access site. You can see I performed an angiogram here and I have extravasation, which is expected, but we're going to be treating that with a balloon angioplasty. Uh, prior to completing therapy. So after crossing into the pedal plantar loop, I was able to perform good orbital atherectomy in this case for to achieve really optimized luminal gain and vessel prep. Again, IVIS or EVIS for appropriate balloon sizing. I was able to perform low pressure, prolonged balloon angioplasty, and that allowed me to achieve really a nice uh, angiographic result with a widely patent two vessel runoff. And you can see distally, we have a lot of hibernating vessels below the ankle joint. And we were really able to achieve one of the CLI endpoints we talk about, uh, in addition to number of vessels open, the speed of blood flow, the hemodynamics, but also a nice angiographic wound blush. And over the course of about 10 months, we were able to really achieve uh, nice wound healing and, and hopefully he will be fully healed in the next several months. Next, let's talk about another technique uh, called NABI bossing. This is another CLI patient who had a non-healing wound in the distribution of the anterior tibial artery. This was despite optimal podiatry and wound care. Uh, I knew looking at this proximal cap uh, uh, involving the anterior tibial artery occlusion that given all these different vessels coming off of that uh, proximal cap and the fact that the cap itself was relatively ambiguous in terms of its morphology, that I would probably need dual access in this case to really achieve a full successful recanalization of the anterior tubular artery. And again, you can see here I access the dorsalis pedis artery in this case as under ultrasound it was patent and hibernating. Uh, you can see I'm using a knuckle wire technique to really recanalize this anterior tibial artery. And once again, I'm in a subintimal plane, and so I was not able to achieve through and through access uh, from below only. I then used a catheter guide wire system from above. And once I started, you can see that I have two catheter guide wire systems and two subintimal planes. And so in this case, the strategy was to use a technique called navi bossing. This is typically performed with a four French navi cross catheter. In this case, this is made by Terumo. And then basically, I am trying to disrupt the tissue between the two separate subintimal planes, uh, which then ultimately allowed me to get through and through access, externalize my, externalize my guide wire, then reverse it, cross into the pedal plantar loop, and ultimately, after good vessel prep and prolonged low pressure angioplasty, achieve a nice angiographic result. And remember, final angiography should also uh, always include AP and lateral views of the foot. In this case, I was looking for a CLI endpoint, as you can see here, indicated by the red arrows, that we had a nice angiographic wound blush. And this patient ultimately went on to heal with good podiatry care uh, as a result. Next, we have the transcollateral technique. As you can see here, a collateral vessel from the perineal artery is being used to access a diseased anterior tibial artery. Uh, in order to not only recanalize it, but to deliver therapy, in this case, angioplasty. Finally, we have the Janali technique. This is a technique described by Jihad Mustafa, who is really known as a CLI expert. Uh, basically, you take a CTO catheter, a low tip load guide wire with a hydrophilic tip. A common guide wire is the V18 guide wire. You prolapse the tip of the wire, twist the whole system in order to create a corkscrew type uh, appearance and then you use it as like a drill bit where you basically drill through uh, an occlusion or diseased uh, vessel. In this case you can see what it looks like fluoroscopically as well as under ultrasound guidance. So in conclusion, CLI patients today are more complex than ever due to the explosion of diabetes and CKD. 
You must master the CTO techniques to use them during endovascular interventions. And remember, if you can't cross a CTO, then you can't deliver therapy. And this ultimately puts the patient at risk for amputation and death. Thank you. Thank you.